Hi. Hi. Welcome, Welcome to, to another Film Critters Processes. We are processing remotely. At home edition. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are social uh, distancing. Um, we are talking to each other over Telegram. We are. We we both have our microphones on the floor since we have to do <laughs> a weird recording setup in order to make this work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are, we are both horrible little rats on uh, sitting on the floor to to record this episode, and we're very excited. Uh, today we've got a, another twofer, as it were. Yeah, two movies that were released or were gonna be released in theaters. I think actually the hunt was maybe in theaters for like one week. Uh, I think and Invisible then, Man was too, maybe. Yeah, and then they just like were like, just kidding. Uh, we're putting them. On, <laughs> we're releasing them to to rent and download mm-hmm. instead. Which uh, you know, for the depending low on how price we, of twenty dollars. Twenty fucking dollars. That's like <laughs> more than a movie ticket. <laughs> Literally, fuck that. Fuck was, the studio. Was, fuck the system. I was so angry as I definitely forked over my hard earned twenty dollars. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the twenty dollars came right out of my bank account, and it went into and it and it bought and I watched the movies with the twenty dollars that I spent. Definitely, it, it came directly from my Trump bucks check. I got it. <laughs> I got. I had direct deposit set up. Just that twelve hundred went right in, and I spent it all oh, yeah. <laughs> on renting the hunt and the Invisible Man. It's a f- my my government check went to fifty viewings of the Invisible Man, uh, so that I could be ready for this episode. Um, yeah, uh, which, I, I don't know, which one do you want to do first? I feel like there's more to unpack with The Hunt so we can maybe get Invisible Man out of the way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I feel like The Invisible Man is, is more of a straightforward, uh, project to talk about. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, Invisible Man, uh, directed by Lee Wannell, uh, Wannell, perhaps. Um, great uh starring performance uh by that one crazy bitch uh from us uh elizabeth elizabeth moss moss not ross yeah moss moss uh dress for less there we go yeah uh she Uh, yeah she's she's fucking amazing fun fun fact her name is spelled with an s for elizabeth not a z as i continuously uh, kept making the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we we love any time we get to we get to view her. Uh, unfortunately, this movie. I mean, it's not. It's it wasn't it wasn't horrible. I was I was disappointed. I guess. Yeah. No. Me too. I was really hyped going into it. Um. And then like halfway through, I was like, "What's up? <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the deal, yo?" Yeah. Um, so I looked at I looked up some more and i was like oh this is the guy who like wrote like the first three saw movies and also wrote and directed a couple of the insidious movies and i was just immediately like that makes absolutely fucking perfect sense (laughs) yeah yeah it's like it's a movie that's trying like really 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 hard to be like smart and like this very well well wound together mystery um But there's just a lot of, like, goofy set pieces and a lot of shit that doesn't really add up or make sense. And It's it's half, like, it's got, like, one foot in trying to do the, like, almost A24 kind of prestige horror thing. And then Mm -hmm. one one backwards foot in, like, super schlocky, like, modern horror. Yeah. And I think if it I think if it fully dedicated to either, it would have been a lot better. Oh yeah. But it's like well, you it's it's this mixed thing of like, ah, the fact that he's invisible is a metaphor for like the effects of trauma that women feel after leaving an abusive relationship. But also he does have a ca- a, a suit made of cameras. <laughs> <laughs> He yeah, also like, liter- he also literally has a suit that makes him invisible that like in a it that is non metaphorically covered in cameras. <laughs> yeah, there's this definite attitude of just like wanting it to be like comprehensible and understandable uh and realistic. Like so this could this could totally happen even though it couldn't happen, even though it could happen, where there's this like Elon Musk type uh villain, which of course another another movie where we have like an Elon Musk villain. 
uh, which is great. Um, but I mean, like this kind of movie, don't give it to, don't give it to like Lee Wannell, give it to like Claire Denis or someone who's just like gonna go goofy with it. Uh, and like not try to have it, not try to have everything wrap up and make sense. Um, but like have the movie make more emotional sense and hammer home the emotional aspect of the sort of like gaslighty nature, I guess. I, yeah. And like, cause like one thing that I thought was like, uh, for lack of a way to put it, problem with the film is that it does establish like basically immediately that she's not imagining it, which I think really undercuts yeah. like the feeling of like, you know, because they do a good job of setting it up where it's like the one thing he's good at is getting in your head. So, like, the only thing better than finding a way to be invisible is convincing you that he found a way to be invisible. And I feel yeah. like if they had set in that feeling more, it would have been a good creepy horror. Because, like, you could still have scenes like the scene where you see somebody taking a photo of her and kind of leave it ambiguous as to, like, is she imagining this? Are these things that we're seeing, like, literally happening? Uh, right. But it, it's just like immediately it's like, oh, no, like he's literally invisible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, there's it, it's there's this thing that horror movies do where like. I, it, I think it would be more kind of. It, it, it would inspire more empathy or more sympathy, maybe to uh, have it so that the character is like slightly unbelievable but when we're kind of stuck with the character, there's not really a lot of, like, there's certainly conflict happening in the narrative, but there isn't conflict with the narrative, like, with itself, you know, where it's it's not, it's not very interesting to sit there and be like, oh yeah, she was right the whole time, and she was still right the whole time, and now I'm, I ended the movie and she was right the whole time, um, even though there was some pretty, there were some pretty, like, satisfying payoffs. Like, I did think the ending was fun. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say... I I was very satisfied with the ending because I kind of assumed it was just going to like either conclude in an ambiguous like and he's still out there yeah. uh, or it was going to conclude in a like and even though I have defeated the invisible man, the metaphorical invisible man haunts us all. <laughs> but instead it's just like it's just like no she she seems to be going back to give him one more chance and then there's the payoff of like she hid the invisible suit and i guess he just didn't find it uh mm. i when when there when there was the reveal that it was her brother or that it was his brother one of the times i thought what the twist was going to be was that he actually literally did commit suicide and that it was just like he had set up these plans for after he committed suicide <laughs> Yeah, I I kind of I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, and I, I thought I thought that could have been like a really cool concept is the idea that like no, he actually was dead and he wanted to convince you that he's alive. So it's like this weird thing where like you're both this like you both aren't imagining this, but he also is actually dead. Yeah. I I think it would have been that would have been almost more interesting because it kind of turned out that like the, the way that the plot went was like, oh, both him and his brother are both just complete psychopaths and they're both and they're horrible, which isn't, you know, which isn't altogether unbelievable to me. But when the movie was hinting at like the brother also being, um, you know, before it kind of threw that plot line away, when it was talking about the brother also being kind of like abused by this same character or like in, in the same sort of psychological situation of like fear and like control and all of this stuff like that was really that was really compelling um and that's like you know that's like a thing where like i i don't i don't necessarily i don't necessarily know the statistics uh scientists psychologists can maybe hit us up and let us know how common it is for there to be multiple multiple sociopaths in like one family uh essentially but um yeah the movie kind of there were a lot of things the movie kind of set up and then like floundered on yeah no th there was like a real i i did feel like the the brother's emotional arc was really robbed there because it's like they do a pretty good job of setting up early on that like he's kind of an asshole shithead like his brother but they set up really well that like that is probably the product of having been the brother to a psychopath yeah absolutely uh and, and, and also I, just like being in this like successful sort of like businessy like very 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 rich uh family i guess 
Yeah. And and also, like, I guess sort of implicitly setting it up that's like, and also he, like, has to rely on that brother for that financial security. There's there, yeah. there's an interesting character thing there. And then it's just at the end, he's just like, actually, I am also evil. <laughs> I also twirl the mustache and, uh, you know, run over the people on the track or whatever. And then, like, because, like, when that happened, too, I was like, that just raises more. Like, I was willing to accept that he somehow faked his suicide. But then the second they were like, and the brother's in on it, I was like, okay, then how did they together fake his suicide? Like, did his brother just, like, go to, like, to the coroner's office and is like, my brother killed himself. I can't show you the body. (laughs) (laughs) But it's definitely him. Uh, Because there was, like, a news article that said he had died. Like, it wasn't, like... She was just told this and then there was no coverage like the, like the news articles were like, hey, this super rich, famous person uh, is fucking dead. Yeah, it's really. It's so like there, there's so much suspension of disbelief with like a lot of different aspects of that stuff. I did. I did find it funny that like, yeah, your brother, your uh, your husband is dead and his ashes are over there in the extremely evil looking urn. <laughs> the monolith like, urn. Yeah, that is like a like cursed like cube, a black cube. It looks like a fucking like thrown out Death Star design or something. It's horrifying, but it is also very like Web three point oh to be buried in like a weird isometric cube. It's got it's Bluetooth enabled. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> oh my god! You just yeah, that's how he continues to communicate from. Uh, from from the grave even though he's not actually dead he just connects to the he just hooks up to the uh speaker in the kitchen that was that was actually another another space for emotional uh grayness that i thought would have been interesting was that if at the end you know the ending plays out the same but it's maybe left a little bit more ambiguous whether or not he actually like was behind it Mm mm-hmm um yeah. because like there's the thing where he keeps saying surprise and theoretically like you, the argument could be made that like the brother you know just used like old audio footage of his brother saying that right i guess that's true i i, I think the movie the movie's trying to maybe communicate that that's not well i don't know it's hard to say I, the movie definitely, because, like, that was, like, the one of the few things that was frustrating in that ending scene, which she's like, I need you to just say that, like, that was you and that you were behind it. And then he says, surprise, and that's very much so as, like, oh, I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to let you know that, like, that was me. Yeah. Uh, and it's, like, I, I feel like Elizabeth Moss' character is at a point where she would just straight up say, like, motherfucker, I heard you talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said shit. Like you didn't, you didn't just say like just surprise. You said like we had like full ass conversations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of it's a little weak. It, there's a lot of there's a lot of weak aspects about it. The logic falls apart in a lot of a lot of places. And to an extent, um, that's fine. But it's like that's the the noticing that logic kind of like. It is is more noticeable when the film, like I said, is kind of trying to split these on like very much so of this guy's genre of insidious and saw style horror. And like also it's like a prestige film where it's like the metaphor very much so is worn on its sleeve. Yeah. And it has kind of the other aspect, too, where like you, you're really as the writing is going on, you're really watching the movie like feverishly covering its own tracks uh, like. There is that really goofy line, like, they, the way that they explain that, like, the the husband is, like, the CEO of an optics company is, like, in a bunch of weird, like, throwaway lines. And she it's, like, she literally says at some point, I think he could have made himself, invis- like, invisible. He was a, a brilliant genius in the field of optics research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, people just are like, all right, whatever, miss. Whatever you say, crazy lady whose husband was a billionaire. Whose husband is a billionaire and whose house apparently still contained, like, everything of, like, uh, detailing his invisible suit. She, like, walks, she, like, waltzes in and finds, like, an invisible suit maker. And, like, the cops are just like, no, we're not going to search the dead man's house. We're just not going to do that. I apologize, ma'am. 
I, I assume that this thing he was working on was something that like investors in his company knew about. Like there's like nobody was like, yeah, yeah actually he did have a suit that could make him invisible. He'd been working on it for like a really long. I'm surprised you didn't know you lived with him, right? He had like five of them. <laughs> didn't he ever make you try one on? It's, it's weird. He said he would only make them in his size and for some reason his brother's size, like just just those two. <laughs> Yeah, he actually, he made them, uh, he made a duct tape model out of, uh, out of his brother. It was a really weird situation. I thought they were, I thought they were doing something else for a sec. (laughs) The duct tape model to make his invisible suit. (laughs) Um, yeah, how about that, how about that cop shootout scene, though? That was, uh, sure something. Yeah, that was like, that was part of the reason why I tempered my expectations going in, because they showed those in the trailers, and I was like, you can't show half of this trailer being like, oh, this movie is going to be Elizabeth Moss being like, uh, uh, like crazy. Is she imagining it? Is she not like abuse survivor? Uh, and then also in the trailer, tell me there is going to be a part where he just is killing cops in the middle of a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not there's not very much to gaslight about that. That's not very gaslightable. Unless you're just gaslighting like an entire town's population at a certain point. <laughs> all the cops just got real suicidal all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> they started doing this like weird stomp bit. I, I didn't know what was going on. It, you know, uh, it was weird. Like one of the cops, he just like, just couldn't take it anymore. And so he tied his bed sheets together and just kneeled really, really hard and like broke his hyoid bone. It was very strange. Oh my <laughs> fucking God. <laughs> yeah, this is actually, we can't, no, we can't make, I can't keep making Epstein jokes. We can't make Epstein jokes every single episode. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I say that, but I guess maybe we can. Uh, I, you, you say that, uh, and yet we're also <laughs> going to be talking about the hunt in this episode. <laughs> oh my fuck it. Yeah, you're right. We might as well just, uh, might as well just get it out of the way. You know, he it's, really was the visible man. I, I, I thought it was, I, it's a movie that I'm like, this is a hundred percent worth watching if you like Elizabeth Moss because she is great yeah. in it and she definitely like perfectly cast. It's just a thing where you watch it and you're like, Oh, there's like, cause even if it was like saw level schlock, that's fun. Like that can be a fun movie. I, I could just watch scenes of her just pouring coffee on the ground <laughs> <laughs> forever. <laughs> I, she was, she was perfectly cast. She was like really like the glue to this movie because, um, yeah, her, her, her performances as this type of character are just perfect. And I, I think that's where the brunt of the like praise for this film is coming from, uh, is in like it, it all, all of the sort of portrayal of a woman who's going through that shit, uh, is like so, so perfect. She so perfectly like emphasizes it that there's like, there's room for a little wiggliness and like the writing, uh, and the accuracy and, you know, some of the stuff. And I, I also, to be fair, think that like some of the directing choices were good and, or like largely it was like the directing itself was tasteful, even if the writing didn't really match the tone of like, you know, the performances, uh, and the direction and everything. Yeah. There's, there's some like, like the, that opening scene when she's leaving the house, just the way it'll pan over to like, empty door frames and just like the tension of like is someone gonna come through that yeah was like really yeah. really well executed yeah absolutely it was super super incredible um yeah it's just i don't know I, I wish i wish it was a weirder movie i wish it wasn't trying so hard to be like comprehensible and believable yeah i mean like i i can even imagine like oh a version of this film where like how did he become invisible? Never explained. Like, they don't even try to explain it. Like, he just did. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'd, I'd be super down, super down for anything like that. Um, yeah, the, like, tech CEO villain thing is, like, a little bit, it's a little bit rote. We don't need movies about it. We need a real-life revolution about it. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's, you know, let's have fun with movies, maybe. The uh the Invisible Man, but it's about Elon Musk and Grimes. But instead of being invisible, he just is following her in a very obviously like twisted metal car. Oh God! <laughs> he Elon Musk is gonna be the one fucking uh, twisted metal character where his arms are uh, just like one big wheel. <laughs> Forgot about that character. 
the best fucking video game character of all time. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anything else to say about the Invisible Man? What What did we think about the weird sub? So, like, this also goes into the realm of, like, stressed believability is, like, the sister just immediately accepting that this email she wrote was from her. Yeah, that was goofy as fuck. Like, because, like, like, they so didn't really, believable. they didn't really establish at all. Like, they, they kind of later try to go back and, like, establish it that they had this dynamic of, like, she turns to her sister whenever her, she needs help because her sister has this force that she finds really comforting then. But her sister is, like, very stressful otherwise. Yeah. But then it's, like, they don't establish that before they have that email sort of written. And she's mad about it. And they show excerpts in the email. And one of them is, like, oh, I wish it was you who was dead instead of my abusive ex. And it's, like, who would receive that email and be, like, wow, my (laughs) sister definitely wrote this. My sister definitely thinks this and feels this and absolutely would send this to me. Yes, 100%. Send this to me at five uh, 5.25 a.m. <laughs> I believe is what it said <laughs> on the email. Jesus Christ. Yeah, like, that's, yeah, like, for, for, for a real, like, abusive boyfriend activity, it just comes across as so goofy and and like so impossible to just like that all of that shit was so like the 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 screen time could have been so much better spent than on that you know what i mean yeah and then to have it culminate in her her sister just dying in the goofiest scene hey we're back oh my god we're back holy shit uh yeah oh, this is been... going great <laughs> yeah this is this recording is going great uh, <laughs> for those of you listening at home, we have now now have a setup going where we are both calling each other on Telegram on our phones and recording our audio separately on microphones hooked up to our computers. Yeah, so we're having fun. Um, uh, but we were on. We'll see if it works. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, but her sister. Yeah. So go on about her. Her sister. Uh, and they were roommates. No, her sister. <laughs> um, yeah, they. Uh, so, yeah, very unbelievable dynamic, very weird for them to, like, suddenly turn on each other, um, and very silly for her to just, like, suddenly die in that extremely, uh, extremely goofy way. Like, it was, it was, I don't know, I, I'm kind of on the fence about it, because it was, like, it was one of those scenes where it's definitely designed to be, like, oh, shit, uh, yeah. but at the same time, it was, uh, very silly, no, it was it was like very over the top, especially because like the idea of it, of it being like I will slash her throat with this knife and then put the knife in your hands in the middle of a super public restaurant. And it's like, I don't know, I feel like if they have cameras, <laughs> they might be able to like see that the knife slashed her throat without yeah. her hand being up at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, um. Also, unrelatedly, I did think it was extremely funny that they were, like, extremely shitty to the customer service, uh, to, like, the waiters and shit. Oh, I I felt so bad in that scene because it's like, oh, I've been here where it's like, you have to be in customer service mode, but, like, the people you're catering to are, like, not having it. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, they're going through a thing, uh, and, yeah. Yeah, just, like, uh it was very, it was very, like, every scene has to have conflict, you know? Like, uh, what if, it can't just be the waiter coming over and it's like a, it's like an interaction that's fine. It's gotta, there's gotta be some conflict there, buddy. Screenwriting 101, right? There's gotta be, there's gotta be tension being ratcheted up in this scene. Yeah, gotta, gotta have tension. Um, yeah, very goofy, uh, very silly, but it's a very goofy, very silly film. I- I, I will say, in the film's defense, I feel like that worked with regards to making the death of her sister shocking, because the scene starts off as if it's a very goofy scene. Yeah, yeah, that's so, fair. So, like, the sudden, the sudden killing does actually come as a shock, because, like, that is not the tone that the scene starts out at. You assume it's going <laughs> to be a scene where it's like, we're going to have a little funny thing, and then we're going to have, like, you know, just some dialogue that moves the plot along. Uh, and then instead it becomes like, oh, what is moved along is that her sister is killed. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty fun, you know? Whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. Any, anything uh, anything else about 
Invisible, invisible, miserable. The cop and his daughter, total non-entities in this movie. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like their characters were more, they made a little bit more sense in, like, the first half. Um, and yeah. then once, once things kind of, sh- once shit kind of hit the fan and they had, like, their trust was, like, tested in Elizabeth Moss's character, it was, like, kind of, ee, they're, like, every things kind of just, like, went off track in a way that was, like, felt really accelerated to what would be, to what would be more, like, natural. Like, the, the point from, like, start to Elizabeth Moss, like, screaming in a, like, psych ward bed, it felt, like, really fast to me. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, the, it, the film starts with this premise of, like, oh, he's gonna do stuff to try to isolate her, but it's, like, isolation looks like more piecemeal and isn't just like, ah, I have found the one thing that will make every person immediately abandon you. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, like on on the one hand, like I do kind of appreciate that aspect of the movie where it's kind of saying that like, she is so reliant on um, her husband's like resources and stuff that like, or whatever that she's like in danger when uh, he's, I guess no longer a factor or whatever, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Like the fact that he's like the thing that's like reintroducing danger into her life, and like you know, it, it's it's illustrative and it's 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 a nice sort of fable about uh, kind of control and abuse and all this stuff. Uh, but it it also yeah, it's also like really it's a little cartoonish it's a little it's a little uh trying to prove a point by being by being like a little accentuated maybe but i mean you know that's that might be kind of a reach but you know it depends no no no, i get you it's it's got the same i i kind of am realizing that it's got the same problem that i had with like insidious and babadook but to a lesser much much lesser extent yeah where it is trying to do the like prestige horror thing while still being as schlocky and goofy in so- a lot of elements as like regu- as like other horror, and that leads to like a weird tonal dissonance <laughs> that like yeah. kind of ends up undermining like both elements of it. Yeah, I kind of I find that to be a case. Um, I find that to be the case with, uh, you know, whether on purpose or or not, probably not. But with a lot of Bloomhouse movies, um, main exceptions being uh, like Jordan Peele stuff, like. Uh, there's this like you know one foot on either side of uh the sort of like tonal capacity for the movies to be like hard hitting if that makes any sense where they're they're, like they just have to have like a certain level of corniness or just like kind of kind of iffy writing or whatever there's definitely the the bloom house flavor uh which is like that scene with the waiter that's like a cl- that's like a super bloom house thing yeah is to just have like a scene of like weird like don't you hate it when this happens like in the yeah. middle of like a movie where like characters lives are at risk god yeah uh, and I, I said this is someone who sees like a lot of bloom house shit like uh like truth or die or like i think countdown was a bloom house film and i saw that I'm probably going to see Fantasy Island and I can guarantee there's going to be a scene like that about like, uh, so like, like there's a scene in the trailer for the Fantasy Island one where it's like, we can make anything possible. No cell phone service out here. Guess not anything. (laughs) God. Yeah. So yeah, I I guess they're going to continue with their sort of, you know, mildly goofy horror fair, uh, which, uh, you know, I, I'm like, I'm like, whatever on, I wish they would, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I always, I always want horror to be like way more unflinching and way more like unafraid to be itself. Uh, if that makes any sense, like even, even comedy horrors, like, I don't know, like Midsummer, which I like rewatched pretty recently, like that still has such a, such a bite to it and such a like perfect tone and like such like you know good good writing is basically what i is basically what i want um yeah 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 which is hard to come by of course but uh i want i want some some good spooks and scares (laughs) i want to get scared i want to i want to be like ah spooky (laughs) oh man 
Oh, oh gosh. Oh, look, oh. Out, look, look out, lady. There's a ghost behind you. <laughs> I like uh, I like horror. I'm a, I'm a big horror stan. Uh, what are you What are you glad that you didn't spend your $20 fucking rental fee on? <laughs> God, um... Shit. I guess I'm glad I didn't spend it on... I don't know. I guess I'm glad I'm I guess I'm glad I didn't spend it on therapy. Cuz my my therapist <laughs> would just not believe me again. Yeah. I'm the telling you he's was... standing right there. Uh I don't know. What 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 are you uh what would you not rather have spent your $20 on? Uh shares in Elon Musk's Tulsa company. <laughs> Uh, I I got a feeling it's not really going to be doing too great. <laughs> to you know, right now. I I think that uh, yeah, yeah, stonks stonks are uh, going down, as it were. I I like how uh, there's like a a sports ball word for the stock market now. Oh yeah, stonks. Stonks. Uh, I I love that like our our generation, generously speaking. Uh, <laughs> has really just accelerated the sports ball mentality, but applied it to so many things. Whereas oh, yeah. the economy and stock market was taking just endless shit posts about it that got like meaner and meaner as people were like, guys, this is really serious. Like, like the economy is like getting like crashing and people just being like, oh, okay. And then posting like photos of like anime dan- dancing anime girls to caramel dancing <laughs> over like the stock market crashing <laughs> <laughs> anyway stan luna yeah <laughs> maybe if the economy did this she wouldn't have flopped <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ uh yeah it's i mean it, it is funny uh, money printer machine go brr. i was gonna say i think that stuff is just because it also just reflects that like to a lot of those people, including ourselves, shit posting, it's like, damn, stocks are like plummeting. I literally don't know what that means. <laughs> like, I don't know how that affects me, and I don't care. I mean, it 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 affects people who are like doing stock trading, um, and I, maybe it has something to do with the economy. But like, the economy is also not real. So like, it it like trickles down to us in a way, <laughs> but it's like it feels like well. They're getting fucked probably more than I'm getting fucked because I'm already getting fucked, and I don't know if they could necessarily fuck me more. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, fuck, fuck the, fuck the world, fuck the stocks. Um, one hundred trillion dead cops. Uh, I am trash man. Uh, Etc. You know, you know how it goes. You know how the rest. Yeah. You know the rest. As Joe Biden might say, you know the rest. Uh, and if you're and if you're walking down Wall Street, get an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hey, throw some bows while you're down there. Just yeah. some, uh, what would you rather have spent your hard earned 20 uh, entire dollars on? Um, oh, what would I rather have spent my $20 on? I think I might like, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of use out of like two months of Spotify premium. Yeah. <laughs> so I, Now's I a good like time. That. Yeah. <laughs> Stocks Maybe for Spotify? Also- going up maybe like maybe like or maybe like you know try out like audible finally use like one of those youtuber like get a month free thing and then i get like three months of it uh yeah and I just like listen to a bunch of audiobooks while like i'm playing death stranding oh that'd be fun oh that sounds fun or while i'm doing or while i'm doing my government mandated uh walk around the block <laughs> not too much not too much walking citizen they're gonna they're gonna put like electric fence tag tags on all of us so we can. <laughs> uh, I think I would have rather spent twenty dollars on um, uh, a down payment on my fucking house or something. Twenty fucking dollars. Hey, I I know that like we don't talk about politics too much, but uh, or we do talk about politics too much. Um, <laughs> I I will say I feel like shortly after this, great time to rent because the Airbnb market fucking bottomed out. I have some friends who uh, who like moved to New York recently and have literally been living in Airbnbs like literally in the months leading up to this while trying to find rent in New York. And they were like, uh-huh. yeah, oddly enough, it's kind of worked out because like our Airbnb host is just so desperate now that they're essentially just letting us rent here. <laughs> <laughs> Great. 
Like, we were like, hey, can we, like, sign a lease or whatever? And they are like, oh, it'll be, like, this much to sign a lease. And they are like, oh, well, we're not going to do that. And they're like, okay, well, do you want to just rent the Airbnb for another month? <laughs> <laughs> so they're basically just getting, like, a free, a, like, not a free, but, like, cheap apartment rent <laughs> that's, while they look. That's iconic. Um, yeah. And uh, do we, do we want to move on to the hunt? Yeah, speaking of uh, the elites. <laughs> Uh, I I feel I feel like I ha, it do not go on Reddit enough to talk about this movie, which is to say I, I don't and go I on do, Reddit. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, the hunt. Uh, so so, wh- what were your expectations going into this? Uh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, I know that it was like. There was a bunch of controversy, or rather, I say, I say there was a bunch of controversy. There was, like, there was controversy, um, about, I guess, the content of the film and, like, the bent of the film before it came out, and it was pushed back because uh, a bunch of, a bunch of shootings happened, um, which, you know, read the room a little bit, I guess. Uh, it, but, uh, it actually specifically was because it got jokered, but by the right, uh, because Trump, like, I think if I remember correctly, specifically called out the movie when like, too, you know, yeah. shootings were going on because uh, he was like, oh, like maybe the shootings are going on because Hollywood keeps doing all these movies about shooting people like The Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't recall if he like mentioned it by name, but he was definitely like kind of trying to point toward the hunt as like yeah as as like so this sort of propaganda thing which is kind of i don't i don't know dude like there there's a lot there's definitely a lot to unpack in this movie um i think a good place for us to start is by talking about right out the gate uh damon lindelof one of the writers of this movie um who's really uh who has done a lot and is at every moment doing so much uh he really oh my god uh so he the reason that he left twitter um was because uh he tweeted out that uh at at the end credits for the dark knight rises people should stand for a moment of silence um and then people very naturally and understandably were like uh, read the room. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> and he, his immediate response was like, wow, SMH, guess you can't say anything on Twitter nowadays, hashtag cynics win. <laughs> Which yeah. is like, dude, yeah. people did just die. Yeah, people just died and you're like, the, the response should be that we should have a moment of silence at the bat versus clown movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So... That I think is like a good, uh, a a good litmus test for like where this movie's coming from and like what the kind of attitude is. I guess that like there there's a big South Park like attitude here. Yeah, I I I've been describing it as like South Park by way of Saturday Night Live. Oh yeah. Um, or even like if you've seen Mike Judge's The Good Family, uh, it's it's very oh, God, which no one has. V- yeah, I I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's which is to say it's like caricature based political commentary that kind of doesn't really go much more beyond that surface caricature. Yeah. And uh, and so it has a lot of ideas that it kind of gestures at that could have been sketched out into like a much more interesting movie. But it doesn't, right. it, it seems like it's trying to both sides it in a way that it doesn't want to risk going too far in either caricature. Yeah. Yeah. It, the movie, and it like goes... that, that, that doesn't work when the plot of your film is that the liberal elite is murdering conservative Americans. A, a hundred, a hundred thousand percent. Well, I mean, like, it's it it is another issue of like reading the room because when sort of 
when, when leftists uh, in real life, um, because there there's this, I, I don't think this movie's really talking about like leftist activism in any in any capacity. I do think it's uh, about the conflict between like liberal elitism and uh, kind of worker like conservative like workers and like worker values which is kind of tough because a lot of the actors who they hired specifically within like the first i would say like five minutes of the movie uh look like gentrifiers like they look like liberals they don't really come across as uh yeah these like world weary conservatives um, yeah no no there's there's definitely a chunk of the initial audio of the initial uh conservative redneck conservative americans that don't fit like a working class redneck aesthetic they fit a like they vote for whichever party they think will give them a better tax break <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely uh and like that's kind of it's that's kind of its own issue um there's like all this shit where like the movie is kind of superficially uh lending itself to this idea that like the poor are uh, I guess downtrodden or whatever. Uh, but then there's like all of these goofy little. There's all these goofy bits about like the one of the guys is like, no, I need I need more food from this refugee camp. Put some more on there. I'm coming for seconds. And like, all of all of this like really kind of hateful, kind of shitty. Like the one of the guys says like sayonara sugar tits at one point. I did I did write a, write down a couple of lines from this movie, um, because uh, a lot of them were bad. Yeah. Um, and, and and here's here's kind of where where I'm coming from and where I fall on the, uh, fall on the issue is like, if a character, I, I know that it's like a strong there's a strong um, inclination to laugh at a character who says something like, you know, all the globalist cucks who run the deep state, uh, and like that is goofy, uh, that is like a, a goofy place for someone. Or, or I can see how that would seem like a goofy place for someone to land um, ideologically. Uh, but for, uh, I guess, for trans people, uh, for <laughs> queer people, and for a lot of people, that is just, like, an element of, an element of, like, narrative control and separation where this conspiracy theory shit is all about uh, splitting, splitting the party of the proletariat by these like ident identity and ideological lines um that are like like there should be maybe a little bit more uh you know empathy for for that being the condition of america because the fact that there is so much like media uh, you know for i guess for lack of a better term right now gaslighting um and just like so much, you know, information out there and just so much like deep state shit that actually is happening. Uh, that's kind of hard to sift from the bullshit. Uh, you know, that all is emblematic of a problem with like the elite aspect of society and the class and the class separation aspect of society and not really something that like the poor, not really something that poor people are trafficking in or benefit benefiting from, I guess. Yeah. I like like the core the core sort of like contradiction of the film to me sort of building off of that too is that in its in its pursuit of this caricature both sideism kind of mentality which is like I think you can do that fine like I think I think you could make a movie like this that does caricature both sideism and yeah. still have the message pull off I just don't think this movie does because I think the way it ends up doing it is that it reinforces the liberal elite like liberal elitist idea that like poor people are inherently stupid and reactionary and believe in stupid reactionary things and that liberal elites believe in things that are correct. Right. And yeah. the movie just, and the movie just reinforces that. <laughs> yeah. Is, is like, is kind of what happens. It's like the movie doesn't like the movie tries to critique that with the whole thing at the end where it's like, Oh my God, you've read animal farm, even though you're from the South. <laughs> uh, so fucking which is goofy. such a condescending way to like pull off that message like such a horrible execution of it yeah uh, there was that absurd line like oh and by the way climate change is real yeah like like saying stuff like that where it's like you're just reinforcing this idea that like 
poor people believe this thing and like liberal smart wealthy people believe this thing and it's like that's sort of like the contradiction that like justifies this sort of elitist ruling over and like exploitation of like middle america or like poor working class americans by like smearing them with this brush and writing them off as all like inherently reactionary and the film just like reinforces that because even while it's critiquing it it's also like oh well the conspiracy is real because you wanted it to be real and the only way it kind of concedes that is rather than questioning like the ways those do that it's like but some poor people have read animal farm (laughs) which is like so like most people have read animal farm yeah it's like it's like you have to read it in high school like what the fuck are you talking about (laughs) Yeah, so, and I, I, the movie is kind of, like, unpacking this, like, sort of class separation of, like, information, I guess. But the movie was also clearly never going to, like, write any characters that are good or, like, believable or, you know, worth being on their side. Um, Apart from the main character, I guess, who's kind of, like, who the movie takes its sweet sweet fucking time to introduce for one thing and secondly is a pretty bare bones character i literally cannot think of a way to so i was talking about this before it's it's in a post sort of like ready or not or your next situation it's in that kind of oeuvre of film where like the main character is like a, a badass like female uh lead who surprisingly like isn't just like running away from the killers and resisting them but is also like able to match them yeah like skill set and able to match them in like setting up traps and whatnot uh yeah but the problem is that in both your next and ready or not and i didn't even really like your next that character is like sketched out into a real character but (laughs) snowball or crystal uh is it like the, I can't think of any way to describe her as like a person. Well, she's yeah, she's this self insert is like definitely the wrong term, but like this sort of specific style of character. The thing that this movie really reminded me of was there's like a Jenny Nicholson video about um, some book it, like where like the main character is like on a liberal college campus and all of the liberal college campus elites are just acting like completely absurdly uh, all the time. And it's, it's clear that like this person just wanted to write their own fantasy of like this sort of like class-based like retribution or whatever. I, I think it was, I think it's uh, called safe spaces. Yeah. Something, yeah. Something like that. Um, where it's, like, this very Redditor mindset of, like, oh, snowflakes, uh, blah, 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 SJWs are so uh, evil, and they're uh, assaulting, they're actually backwards, and they actually hate women, um, which, you know, isn't always false. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, 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 there's a bit of truth to that, to the way in which uh, that sort of mindset leads people to have, uh, ironically, very misogynistic views in the pursuit of being pro-woman. Yeah, which is, is to me, part of, like, the weird class stratification thing where, like, um, each each side is kind of presuming these, like, really straw man things about the other side uh, in, in a lot of these kind of conflicts between right wing and left wing, I guess, where, like, you know, uh, li- liberal elites, as it were, kind of have this presumption that people on the right wing, uh, like, hate women it's not it's it's much more like complicated than that like you know the reason that people vote against their own interests is like really is often like really complicated and we're seeing right now that that is voting against your own interests is a two-party thing yeah Um, (laughs) (laughs) because uh, a lot of people are plugging their ears and uh voting for uh one of the weakest candidates in electoral american electoral history so you know it's hard to it's hard to be like come down on one side or the other as far as whether that's as far as who's the uh, aggressor or whatever. Yeah, and it's it's that's that's kind of like the thing at the heart of the film that I think is like could have been, you know, baked out into and could have even have kept, like I said, the same South Parkian thing 
Uh, like, I think you could have still pulled that message out. I think it's just the film kind of gets afraid to commit to any of the bits that it's presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, cause like, you know, that's, that's sort of the message at the end is like, oh, like both sides make assumptions about the other that end up hurting themselves and each other. Uh, where it's like, you know, all these people assumed that these liberal elites were being serious about like hunting deplorables and that this is an actual thing. They were assuming that all of these people that they were mad at were like just ignorant, like monstrous bigots and that like they deserve whatever came to them. And it's like, well, you know, both sides are wrong. But then at the same time, the film's also like, okay, but like both sides are also right within the language of this film. Yeah. Because all the people they target like kind of are pieces of shit. Uh, And all the liberal elites in the film like are willing to murder people (laughs) and hunt them for sport. (laughs) Right. And it's not like there's not some good bit. Like, I, we were talking about, like, lines we wrote down, and I will say the funniest, the, the one thing in the film that, like, gave me hope at the start was when she figures out what's going on because she goes to buy a pack of smokes and the change is too little. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah. that's such a thing where it's like, if you go to, like, uh, a more blue state, cigarettes are, like, 10 at minimum 10 bucks and then you go to like smaller states or like red states and cigarettes are like six bucks <laughs> oh yeah I and also, that's such I, a like small bit that i'm like oh that's like that's actually like a really clever joke there's things there there is another really clever joke in the same vein like there's things that the movie introduces but doesn't fully capitalize on in a way that i want it to like um at the ending where like the sort of where the, it's like the showdown at the end between the two girls. I, it's so sad that they don't give Hillary Swank more 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 room to play out her character because she 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 exudes that character perfectly. Yeah, she 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 did do a really good job. Um, but like her bit about correcting the spelling of like her political screed posts and and shit, like life really imitates art. Yeah, like, <laughs> I. I, I, there is an important point that I want to get to, but before that, um, I thought that the ending, there was, like, really a lot going on with the ending, and some of it was interesting, where, like, she kind of gets through all of this shit, uh, and then at the end she, like, puts on the costume of the rich, and she's able to kind of take their place, and, like, you know, class is kind of, like, meaningless, and, and... Oftentimes, rich is just, like, a cosplay that kind of, like, self-perpetuates. That was really interesting. I do not believe that she gave herself a full blowout uh, (laughs) immediately after killing someone. (laughs) I I was wondering about that. I was like, damn, she, like, did her hair. (laughs) Yeah, a blowout is fucking hard to do. It's, like, nearly impossible to do what I... I say nearly impossible. It's absolutely possible. But doing it alone is, like, torture. And the, the idea of her, like, getting stabbed and then being like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself a blowout. Fuck it. I'm going to look fancy when I get on this plane. When, when I was watching this movie with some friends over Discord, because we were practicing social distancing, the scene where she's telling the story of the rabbit and the hare, we were literally, like, going, like, why are you taking so long to tell this setup? We I, <laughs> fucking who doesn't know what the story of the rabbit and the or the the hare and the tortoise is? Uh, like it's, that's the, it's the tortoise and the hare, but fucked up. Yeah, and it's like okay, you could have told that story, but it's like they spend like so long setting up and just retelling the original tortoise and the hare story up until the end, and I'm like, th- like you don't need to do this. Like we know what the tortoise and the like we know where this is going immediately. Yeah, it's such fucking goofy writing. It makes me really want to watch uh, watch the Watchmen uh, series that Damon Lindelof worked on. It sounds like similarly audacious and ridiculous. It's and that line, too, is actually like another point where it's like, here's an idea you're almost teasing out where it's like the the hair comes in and like kills his kids and stuff and then forces them to eat him because like the hair always wins. And it's like yeah. that. Hey. That's like a a class uh, a class critique that you could you could have baked into this film that you just kind of left out. Yeah. Oh, but get it because the hair there was a rabbit later on at the end of the movie. 
Oh, dude. This film, it's it's such a... A South Park not... episode should not be, like, more tightly written than your movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. South Park at least has, like, good A and B plots to switch between. I don't know. Just... Parasite's better. Parasite did it. Yeah, Parasite did it. Parasite did it Parasite first. Parasite did it. Parasite did it. Parasite did it. Um, Honestly, I, I brought it up earlier. Ready or Not did like the same sort of thing, like way better. Like Ready or Not has like a baked in class critique as well. Yeah, I, I have not seen Ready or Not yet, but I really want to. Um, I kind of hear similar things about Knives Out a little bit. Uh, so I'm kind of curious about that as well. I, I missed uh, a lot of movies last year. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, I know no, I, 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 know I, I run this fucking podcast or whatever. I mean, to be fair, because we run this podcast, we have to watch a lot of movies. And so sometimes we don't go and see the movie that everyone's talking about because <laughs> because we're watching <laughs> fucking The Hunt. Because we're watching Cats. Uh, but, speaking you know, of you it is also, important. We should also watch, uh, maybe we should watch The Boy 2 when it's, now that it's come into streaming as well. Uh, then I'd have to watch The Boy 1. The Boy 1 is a very funny movie, I will say that. Okay, that might be worth it. That might be fun. Um, so, uh, easily the most important and crucial aspect of the hunt that I really want to bring up, and I don't want us to spend any time, any more time ignoring, um, is the Homestar Runner connection. D- fucking lost my shit learning that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not aware, there is a conspiracy, um, about the hunt. And it is not a conspiracy. It is an it is in fact an actual fact, uh, where <laughs> one of the original creators of Homestar Runner is the director of the hunt. Yeah, uh, not Craig not Zobel. not like not the guys who stayed on it. Like one of the guy, like basically one of the guys who came up and helped them develop the concept. Yeah, uh, is the director of the hunt. Yeah. Um, which is uh so much funnier than anything ever. Uh, I don't, I don't know if I have anything to say about it other than that it's hilarious to me. It's, it's a very, very, very funny connection. It's very weird too, to see that he's also like worked, like he was also one of the guys who helped create Lost. He's basically the guy who helps create things and gets none of the credit for them. (laughs) Yeah. What the fuck? Who's that guy that, that Bill Gates bought out of Microsoft and I assume had killed. (laughs) He's like that. It's easy to assume that. He's like yeah. that for Homestar Runner and also Lost. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, what, there's there's this weird, like, Lost uh, empire where they're, like, lo- Lost is just creating this, like, weird uh, sort of, like, extended universe of shit that, like, all of these people are working together on. Um, which is, you know, it's not not nepotistic, but I, I guess I can't blame them. Uh like I know they went on, they went on to the leftovers and Watchmen and like all this shit where like it's a lot of the same people. Oh, um, that makes sense. yeah. No, I hey, if you do watch the Watchmen, let me know if it's worth watching. <laughs> if it, it who watches uh, the the same joke everyone has made about uh, the Watchmen. Um, I Watchmen, I will but I know. hardly know men. Oh Jesus Christ! Fuck. Do we have anything else to say about uh, To Hunt? I mean, in theory. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say, I think this is something we disagree on. Um, I think it could have been better executed. I did like the bit. I w- again, wish it was better executed of opening the film, introducing this cast of characters who looks like the sort of conservative fantasy of like what this movie would star and then immediately killing all of them. <laughs> And leaving, like, two yeah. of the worst characters. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it. I, I feel kind of complicated ways about it. I don't think it works for the narrative. I think that, like, I, I, I do think that there was some some sort of, it, it's maybe not strong enough or not that present enough, but there's some sort of, like, narrative of, like, these guys who kind of look like this stereotypical Chad ideal. Um, more or less, I mean, you know, there's some argument to be made, uh, there, I'm certain, by, uh, losers on 4chan, but, uh, yeah, 
they're, 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 they do cycle through some, some like, chat of center gentlemen, uh, which is funny, but also, I don't know. When a movie it, is so subsumed by, like, being up its own ass in that sort of tonal way, it's hard for me to be like, oh, great bit. You know it, what I mean? It really fucks up the pacing of the film because it's extremely slow. Uh, well, not extremely yeah. slow, but it's a very short film, and that's, like, easily the first, like, 20, 30 minutes of the film. Right. Yeah. Oh, speaking and of, like, I need to uh, keep keep talking. I wanted to look up because all of those characters have names and they're horrible. <laughs> oh God, I can't wait to find out. Well, I do know that there was the one character who like call who like calls the guy a snowflake because he won't kill her. And yeah, that's, like, yeah, yeah. First oh. fuck fucking couple minutes of the movie. That's such a like weird scene, and it's like that's like it feels like it's the scene where they just wanted a bunch of gore. Because she's, like, blown in half and her or entrails are, like, dripping out of her. And then they just, like, don't really have any other gruesomeness beyond that. Oh, I did not make this connection. Uh, so the, the, the character who looks like she's going to be the main character, uh, like, like the, the sort of, like, North Face jacket girl, that was Emma uh-huh. Roberts. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's why she was... Like, cause like, I remember she was very presented front and center in a lot of the advertising too. like that character. See, like I said, like that's, that's a cute bit. Uh, yeah, that was Emma Roberts. Uh, and her character's name is Yoga Pants. Yoga Pants. Oh, we love that. Uh, the, the guy who gets killed, who's like a white rapper is named Vanilla Nice. Oh my God. There's dead sexy. Yeah. Dead sexy. I like a Randy. <laughs> Randy. Wow. Phone Uh Yeah. We have a character named Flight Attendant slash Not Stewardess. We have Crisis Mike. I know that, like, social literacy is such that, like, people kind of more or less understand, like, the brunt of these conspiracies and, like, all of this, all of the weird shit that gets talked about in this movie. But, like, I really want to know what someone thinks who, like, doesn't know about that. I mean, like, Pizzagate has made it so that, like, we all kind of have to care about it in a way, uh, which they do mention yeah. Pizzagate in the movie, which I do find yeah. a little tasteless. I was going to say, it was really weird because they very much so made this, like, the, the Manor Gate thing, like, an obvious parallel to Pizzagate. But then they say that in this universe, Pizzagate is, like, also a conspiracy theory. Yeah. And, and which is just, like, I don't know, like, the messaging is just, like, all over the place. And it's just, like, if... Like what do what do conspiracy theorists like think of this movie? Like what do what do Pizzagate people like? Are, I mean, I'm I'm sure people are just dismissing it out of hand as like liberal propaganda because yeah, that's that's a lot of is, what I've been because seeing. it literally is yeah because it is liberal propaganda, but it's just not liberal propaganda in the like liberal versus conservative way. It's liberal propaganda in the neoliberal way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's this weird thing where like the high class of conservatives and liberals are like nipping at each other's heels uh in these like stupid ass million dollar movies while everybody else is just like you know there there is like an emerging sense of class solidarity i feel like maybe i'm off base i hope i'm reading the room right america but uh it it just feels a lot more abstract and weird to be having this kind of like to be drawing these party lines in this particular way at this particular time when like people are kind of going crazy, but there is also like a lot of proliferation of knowledge about why people are feeling so fucking crazy right now. Yeah. And I mean, like it, the, the film also kind of like almost gets at, but miss Cause like the, 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 I, as much as I do like the bit and like, or like the concept that the film could have done of like pizza gate being made real because people wanted it to be real. Like, I think that is an interesting concept that you could construct a film around. Because, like, that's what the big twist of the movie ends up being, is that Manorgate wasn't real, but they basically were like, well, if we're going to be accused of it anyway, then we are going to, like, get revenge on the people who push this conspiracy theory about us. Yeah. Um, which, at the very least, did also set up, I liked the bit of her being like, it's not a manor, it's a three-bedroom house, and then, like, near the end... uh Snow, uh, snowball being like you like this is not a three-bedroom house this is a manor 
<laughs> uh, yeah. I, I liked the setup of like her earlier in the film being like, it's a three bedroom house, not a manor. And then when we see the place, it is in fact a manor. Yeah. But she uh, does in fact like have a champagne bottle that she is like diving to catch out of the air. God, just yeah. like all of this shit. It's, it's, but it's like, it, it misses the fact that like the reason why insane shit like Pizzagate takes off is, is because there is like people know that they're getting fucked. Like they know that there are conspiracies. Like just, yeah. th- we, Jeffrey Epstein. I know we were like, oh, let's not bring him up all the time. But it's like, the, like he he showed that like there is amongst some level of like the elite, there was a pedophile ring. It wasn't being run out of a pizza parlor that doesn't even have a basement. But like people know that there's something going on with the like with the the political and like wealthy elite. Yeah, well, access to information is always so, like, that's the first thing that gets kind of targeted. And it's really easy to, like, once you kind of understand the history and everything that's already been unclassified as far as, like, what the actual, you know, I don't even want to say conspiracies. Like, we did, like, we have done coups to, like, fuck up other countries. And there is, like, weird insider trading and there are hitmen and, like, there is all of this shit that happens at high levels of society the the government did uh, like literally try to use acid to develop mind control drugs yeah absolutely and that is that should what that should tell you is that there's such an insane level of class stratification that all of that is so like abstract and weird from the perspective of someone who is like of proletariat experience per se like not able to really like spot the difference between like iran contra affair and lizard people yeah. Like that it that's just how fucked up like wealth is in this country and wealth inequality like you know continues to kind of be uh and and yeah it's it's really it's it's really frustrating in that way and it's frustrating to see someone who should know better uh which is to say all of the extremely rich people who uh worked on this film <laughs> uh, kind of perpetuating all of those things as being like one and the same where like the, this conspiracy shit and cle- and Pizzagate, it should be classified as, like, class anguish and class anxiety. Kind of in the same way that, like, Christopher Dorner should be classified as such and, like, all of this other shit where, like, you know, there there's this monopolization of power happening. Um, that needs to be unpacked honestly, and this movie isn't really honest. Yeah, and, like, to be clear, we're not saying, like, Pizzagate is woke, actually. Uh, <laughs> absolutely not uh, no i mean it was it was it was it's put, like it's shit by, pushed by like it, it it was essentially something that was pushed by like mike cernovich and jack posevic and like wealthy like right-wing people essentially as a way to profit for themselves by pushing yeah by pushing a conspiracy onto people that rang true because it spoke to like actual things that were going on but which wasn't true so that they could like profit off of yeah, and, and that's kind of the that's kind of the brunt of it is that like, you know, across party lines, you know, people of wealth like really need to be held to account. Uh, especially you know, especially if the if like the lives of poor working people, because like the you know obviously it came out and re- and you know happened that like that pizza place, all of the people who were like victim to that shit were just like working people who were not Mike Cernovich, you know? Yeah. That, like, who were not, you know, like, not rich people. Yeah, like, no, the, the the people at the at the center of the conspiracy were essentially protected from consequences of it, but the yeah. people who were affected by it were, like, the pizza workers whose job got shot up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So... I, you know, I don't want to I don't want to hear about wokeness or online wokeness or any of that shit when like, you know, when when the state of the state of inequality is such that like shit like this is allowed to come to pass uh, and nothing really fundamentally changes. Uh, and that's kind of what this movie is stuck on is the whole wokeness thing, the whole getting run off of Twitter for being a dumbass thing. Yeah, no, it's it's. Is- it, it's focusing on this idea of like the the problem is just that people don't understand each other and not like, no, the problem is that like rich assholes, regardless of their political ideology, are fucking over poor people 
and then telling them that it's rich assholes of a different political ideology that they should be mad at. Yeah, I don't know. Anything and, else about the hunt? Um, wasn't good. Uh, I, I the worst <laughs> part about it, very boring. A very boring film. Like the the yeah. char- the main characters that are that we're left with are like not fleshed out or particularly good caricatures. The the the, the parody stuff is like really clumsily executed like is is like a, a guy coming into your mentions with a bunch of assumptions about your beliefs level like insults and jokes it feels it definitely feels like that yeah i did like that they cast uh dennis from always sunny as, yeah. <laughs> as one of the rich sociopaths yeah seeing glenn howerton in this was really a lot just so much but yeah there's 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 pieces of meat in this film that I, I would have loved to have seen re- reconstituted into and like not even necessarily like a smarter movie. But like if you're going to go dumb, like go fun. And this movie just isn't. Yeah. fun. <laughs> it's just boring. Yeah. Yeah. It really it, it misses the mark on. Uh, and just like if it, it feels like not a lot really happens and like not a lot of the scenes are very like. Not a lot passes by very interestingly. Uh, I don't know. It's just really frustrating. Don't care about the characters. Don't care about the action. The most Maybe. most of the jokes don't land, and the ones that do don't really make up for like how bad the other jokes are. Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, whatever. Like I said, it if, it feels like an SNL skit format where it's like every scene is just kind of moving to the next bit. Yeah. And 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 trust us when we say that when a millennial is calling you an SNL skit, it is not a compliment. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you what do you what are you glad you what what would you have rather spent your twenty dollars on, and what are you glad you didn't spend your twenty dollars on? Um, I would rather have spent my twenty dollars on. You know, I I've been like the quarantine mood recently has been like thinking about like a pet like kind of like maybe a cat or a dog but like a piggy a piggy would be cute like a little a little baby piglet Oh yeah there's someone in my neighborhood who has a pet pig Oh cute Yeah but I also it, hear the person in your neighborhood who also has like chickens and stuff I think we have a chicken person in our neighborhood too Yeah So like a pet yeah that makes sense Yeah what would you rather have spent your uh, twenty dollars on? I'll get to what I wouldn't have uh, after that. Um, break quarantine to take a bolt bus <laughs> down to Portland. <laughs> God, I just would rather risk coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think about like a lot of a lot of people in my family are like stuck, like uh, in weird places. Like I have like someone in my family who's like stuck in Florida right now. Uh. Who like usually usually lives uh, up in New York and like that seems like such a weird situation to be in. Just like oh, I guess my vacation is a little bit uh, longer. <laughs> the the day the pandemic was declared was the morning that I was leaving Portland to go back to Seattle. So if I had been like one more day off, I might have been trapped in Portland. <laughs> oh my god, trapped in Portland. That's not so bad though. Cause it was like it was a thing where it was like people were starting to kind of take it seriously but it sort of felt like it wasn't like super serious left yet like i think when i was like checking things before i had left it was like okay there was like an outbreak at a nursing home there hasn't really been like a lot of spread yet like it it hadn't really like reached most of us that like oh no this thing is super contagious what would i not rather have spent uh twenty dollars on um I don't know some fucking like right wing conspiracy podcast membership or something. I like uh the 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 Alex Jones like vitality pills. Yeah, I would not rather have spent my twenty dollars to help Milo Yiannopoulos out of crushing debt. Oh man, his debt's got to be getting worse too. <sighs> it can't be getting better. I mean, unless he's because like no one's like no one's gonna be giving him money now, especially. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he can get a job? Like if he has, if he ever has to get like a job job. Uh, I, 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 I don't, I wouldn't on a thing that I'm being recorded on say this lightly. I genuinely think he would kill himself <laughs> if he had to get a real <laughs> job. Yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of with you there. I feel that. 
there, there are a few people that I feel comfortable diagnosing without knowing as like an actual narcissist. I think he's an actual narcissist on the level that like that level of fault, that level of like bruised eagle would actually kill him. <laughs> yeah, that kind of seems kind of seems more or less to be the case. Uh, well, great. What would you not rather have spent your uh, twenty dollars on? Um, I guess I'm glad I didn't spend it on like. You ever like check like if I had like bought a bunch of books to read, and like they were just all like really bad. Like like books like I'd been recommended and they're just like, oh this is like terribly written. Uh like like uh, being stuck in a quarantine with a bunch of bad books is like is like a nightmare to me. Yeah. Or like or like a bad video game. Like if I had spent twenty bucks on Bioshock Infinite and that was gonna be my, like my quarantine game. <laughs> that would be a fucking absolute nightmare. I I totally understand how you feel. Actually, the Bioshock Infinite, great comparison to The Hunt, so I will say I'm glad I didn't spend it on a copy of Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> yeah, similarly uh, able to critique, uh, really good job doing class critique. Great, everybody. Good job, Bioware. Uh, press, t- press, the, the, just press X to commit racism being a thing that happens in the game is like, <laughs> really, really shows you the, the intersection of of ludo narrative form at its at its peak. <laughs> God, yeah, for real. Don't make us talk about Bioshock Infinite, uh, audience, because there's you can just find there's think pieces from 2013. They're you know they're out there. Yeah, there's posts from 2013. <laughs> <laughs> there's drama. Don't worry about it. Um. Yeah, bad bad films. Well, bad movie and one uh kind of a yeah, movie. Like six, six or seven out of ten movie kind of thing. But yeah, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we hope everybody's staying uh, safe uh, and comfortable during this uh, unsafe, uncomfortable time. Thank you again for people who are also continuing to be able to support us on Patreon. We know that, like, you know, people yeah. have to make decisions to people who've had to leave the Patreon for any reason because of the financial times. We get it. It's fine. Yeah, it is a weird, it is a weird, weird time. So if you guys need to like pause your uh, patronage or just kind of, you know, French exit or or however you may need to do it, that's literally. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody's everybody's hurting right now, but like. But if you have we, to, and we do appreciate those who stay and like don't. Yes. If you we, do leave, we we're not gonna. Everybody. Yeah, if you do leave, we're not gonna be like, wow, I can't believe this asshole won't give us <laughs> a couple extra bucks a month. <laughs> Exactly. Um, yeah. So thanks so much. Uh, we've got a poll going right now. Uh, it's got two days left on it as of the time of this recording. So by the time I'll, I'll probably post this tomorrow, maybe. So that might just be final 24 hours. Get your votes in. Uh, Netflix unchill. Yeah. Uh, great poll gonna title. Be, it's going to be Netflix original films that you can watch while you're quarantined in and we're gonna watch whichever one wins the poll and we're gonna do a throws it back about it yeah so we're gonna have a lot of fun and um we're gonna keep trucking along <laughs> yeah stay safe yeah stay please stay safe. socially distanced follow stay inside stay home uh follow you don't, you don't have to follow the news about it because it's stressful but like you know try to try to keep abreast with somebody who can keep you abreast of what's going on uh, Listen to the doctors, the professionals, uh, CDC, whatever, whatever you guys. Reach out, reach out to the people in your life. See if people need anything. Uh, I yeah. feel like a lot of people's connections are super frayed right now, and sometimes you just need that reassurance that, like, hey, we're we're all going through this. We're all dealing with this. Uh, we are not alone. Solidarity. Solidarity. Solidarity, everybody. Uh, Red freeze now. <laughs> rent freeze right fucking now dude rent's fake fuck rent Ugh! it's wild that the government could just be declare all right nobody has to pay rent our mortgages and it would just be true like <laughs> <laughs> interesting there's a lot of interesting things happening right now i hope people are taking note of how many interesting things are happening uh to american systems right now um, they're very interesting you've got a lot of time funny. inside i think you should be you know there's a lot of things you can read about history yeah, <laughs> strongly about, about how about what 
causes changes in a society. Yeah, about how to, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Organize? Uh, yeah, now's a great to... time to, like, organize things. You know, like, you can organize your room, the working <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> your your tenant group. Your spice uh, rack. <laughs> <laughs> can clean your bathroom and you can also clean the healthcare system from the corruption. Just just an interesting time. <laughs> I just think it's funny. I just think it's really funny. All right. Uh, All right. Thank you Peace so out, much everybody. for listening. Thank you so much. I am Baru. I'm Jay Bearhat. Bye. Bye.